Hi everyone, it's Hien Nguyen from HD Consulting. I'm back. Let's get into this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you my six advices to help to reduce or eliminate the risk that I discussed in my last video. Okay. So my first advice to any companies that are going to do M&A or have done M&A in the emerging markets like Vietnam or you are big investors in the companies should have the very early preparation to focus on post M&A integration okay? and in this early preparation you should have prepared the master plan and in that master plan you should include the integration management office okay in that office you can have fully items focus specially focus on the four areas that i have discussed in my previous video focus on those special areas of course different industries different sectors different companies you face different matters you will have different focus but that's are the areas that I advise you should focus on. Also, make the change management program embedded into the IMO so that you will have a well master plan for the post m and integration. Otherwise, you could not be able to recognize and to gain one of the synergy values that you were planning. Give you an example in, in the, what I observed from one of the biggest uh, um, private foreign owned hospital system in Vietnam. Okay, This is Hoan Mi Hospital. So I'm tackling into the current owner only Okay, because it has a very long history before. So the current owner bought the company in 2015. So after this Hoan Mi Hospital deal, this group uh, also acquired many other hospitals uh, around the country, okay? So they uh, consolidated these hospitals into the Hoan Mi Hospital system. Of course, there are some hospitals are making profit and also there are some other hospitals that they, that they acquired also making losses. However, I'm not discussing about other hospitals in the system. I'm only going to discuss about the Hoan Mi hospital system in Ho Chi Minh City after the acquisition. Okay, You look at the number 2018, 19 and 20. Their financial reports, their financial earnings look the same. No changes. And this You know, in 2018, it's already after three years of, um, almost after three years of acquisition, right? So if any integration and synergy values is going to recognize, it should be recognized during this three years period. You can see, you should see the increase in growth in revenue and also in profits for this three years, right? And you don't see it here because for me in my opinion in this case the owner focus too much on the m a uh, expansion they went into the hospital bought the hospital and then right away very very aggressively going to buy other hospitals into the system and put less attention to the Cost M&A integration. I okay. Maybe their focus is um, more on the expansion of the hospitals. But for me, in my opinion, they could have done much better if they separate. Okay, the team to do M&A and everything can be separated and focus on the M&A. That is also that can be one of the uh, in the cost M&A integration program, right? And then the team that focus on uh, change management have to improve to recognize the synergies of the deal of original deal like this hospital then the the performance 
would have been better. So, so my next advice is, you should have analysis and measurements on the risks and also the rewards of uh, the, the company for cost M&A iteration, okay? This can be embedded into the cost M&A master plan and should be should have been done before the M&A deal is signed. Because at this time, when you hire the due diligence team for tax, for valuation, for financial, you can utilize them. When you have tech, you have tackle into the areas you want to investigate, then you operate also the operational uh, due diligence as well. So you can require those advisors to help you with some analysis. And then also your team, you, you assign the team member to set up the PO, uh, PMO program, advanced like maybe in the early time, you don't need to have a full PML uh, team. You just need one or few, two people, a few people to be part of the M&A team and then to get started for the analysis for the risks and the uh, rewards of the... So that you can have the focus as early as possible, or in, go into the course M&A which area you should focus to increase and utilize the synergies, okay? And which area you should focus to reduce the risk. So that is very important aspect. And also for the not just analyze and measurement and also when after the, the course uh, M&A integration when you apply to ex when you execute the program for, for the uh, post m integration, you also need to set the measurement and analysis during the period of time, for example, a few years where for its fully integration of the program and have a plan to analyze the reviewing what has been done, uh, performed well in this plan and what risks we face more and what have not been done well so we can improve more. So periodically review on the program of, and measurement with the performance so we can get early solution for what we face so we can help the company to be better in the in the, this um, post m and integration program. Okay. The next advice is to have a transparency in communication, okay? This one for both parent company also the target company. I here I'm not talking about the transparency in communication among the management and leaders, but it's also throughout the whole companies, both sides, okay? For the people who know the future picture of the new group, the future target of new group, the full stories of that going forward of new group and their knows of their right and their responsibilities in that new picture so that they can work harder, work better and more productive in their role and their daily work. The, another important thing is that when you do the good communication, transparent communication, that also helps to trigger the people feeling of ownership, trigger of feeling of the loyalty to the company, the feeling the part of the whole picture. So they can work harder and try to contribute to the new uh, group, to contribute to the success of the new group, to contribute to the you know, future synergies of the two sides. And especially it will also help to reduce the turnover of the the, 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 the employees as, as you know I said I shared with you in my previous video it's about pupil aspect that is very important and communication miscommunication misunderstanding makes the pupil aspect worse and then 
lead to turnover, high turnover, and also lead to hurt the both sides of the companies, and also not realize in the synergies. My next advice is to get the management team to involve in the very early stage of the M&A stage, okay? Especially the management team that you are going to use in the new target company. They should be involved in throughout the M&A process. They should know or uh, involved in and because if they involve early, they could follow all the items that the, or you, are, you are digging into the companies and then also the due diligence process and understanding the case and understanding what the synergies are going to give the company in the future. So in the future, when they are going to execute and uh, to, to lead the new companies, they can un uh, know which area they should dig into to get better of the synergy. And also, especially throughout the uh, whole M&A process, they also learn all the matters, the problems that they would have to face post m and integration, especially in the culture and the people, the risk in, in the legal and uh, regulation, the risk, risk in IT, all the risks that I, I discussed in my previous video, early prepare for solutions. So in the future, when they execute the program, the com new company strategy, they know where to focus on, okay? And especially that when getting involved into it's not just uh, involved into execution but also get them to involve into making the new plan making the uh, new uh, m and post m and integration plan so that then they will be the one who also contribute to the ideas because they uh, they 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 put themselves into the case into the position so they know what uh, should be done and what sh uh, should have faced that would be better for the company to dig into every areas that might be missing out by the leaders and by the uh, uh, advisors that who help with the post m and integration plan. My next advice is when you do m and in the emerging markets like Vietnam, please, for the post m and integration, hire local, domestic, local, industry experts to help you with the integration process, okay? You can have, um, you, you don't have to have a big budget for this. You can, if you, your company is a, a big group and have a big budget for post m and integration, you can hire the international group or uh, advisory firms to help with some part of the integration, not full, okay? Because for some reason, they are good um, at know-how and their tools and everything, but they don't have the experience in the local market. The tools with wrong people applying, wrong people using, then it's not up to uh, the realization of the, 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 the benefits that they can give. Okay, especially these are uh, many emerging markets. The, uh, these international firms in post integration, they don't have a lot of experience. Even the team in local, they don't also don't have the experience in have uh, post M&A integration. So if you have money, you hire them. It's partial uh, for them to just help you with the tools and the reviewing and the guidance. The remaining work, you you can hire some local experts and also your own team to do the work and to help with the integration, okay? That is very important. I'll tell you why. First of all, the local experts, they have the experience in the local, uh, in the country. They know the know-how a lot and what, and they know the risks in the different uh, industries, especially if they're already in investment and in advisory for a long time, and also they know some specific sectors very well. And also, uh, they also know the culture, the people, how people work differently in different parts of the countries and in different uh, industries. They, they know uh, where the synergies can, can get benefit from and what the risk you have to face and what you can do to reduce the risk to help mitigate the risk and increase the value of the synergies. At the same time, they can also be the middleman the mediator to help 
the two sides to be better understanding each other, to be better communicating so that the performance of the company is smoother, the uh, operation of the company is smoother. They will be, um, you don't face with pupil problem that I mentioned in my previous video. And you uh, don't uh, face with many other risks because this local is but no uh, about the local. They are like the rule of the local. So you should use them. I'm going to tell you a case study, okay, about the Vietnam market. This, this is not many people in this market know. I have a friend who used to work as top management leaders uh, in the PepsiCo in the early time. And later on, he also was a leader of Masan Consumer. So I worked with him for a while before. And then at that time, I was asking him why uh, PepsiCo performed so well compared to Coca-Cola in Vietnam. And he answered to me that uh, he was so proud, okay? PepsiCo performed in Vietnam, uh, outperformed Coca-Cola, and the only country that PepsiCo outperformed Coca-Cola in the whole world, okay? In every other market, Coca-Cola outperformed Pepsi. And only in Vietnam, PepsiCo outperformed Coca-Cola. So I asked him about the reasons, okay? He, he shared with me some of the reasons, but what most impress, impressive for me was uh, uh, that he said that PepsiCo used local experts as CEO, okay? Pepsi, uh, PepsiCo made the early decision to hire a Vietnamese uh, uh, person and train him throughout the process. Lo relocated him to some other markets to understand other markets, to understand about uh, PepsiCo uh, uh, operation and uh, PepsiCo leadership uh, uh, expectation uh, strategy. Wow! Before they located him back to Vietnam to be CEO of PepsiCo and lead PepsiCo to outperform uh, Coca Cola because he know wow about the, the international practice and also he know wow about the uh, local markets and about the uh, culture of Vietnam and about the, about the pupil aspect. So that is a, a successful story and we can learn from. Okay, so my next advice is that you should use some form of earn out program in your uh, share purchasing okay, from the current shareholders. On our program, if you if you can, okay, you can uh, maybe if, if your company strategy that don't have to have the, uh, the strategy that you have to buy majority of the companies or have to invest majority acquire fully the company, then you first buy minority first, and then get into the company to understand the business of the company, to understand the industry, understand the market, and also to to help to integrate um, to the, the culture between the two culture of the, uh, the, the two companies for a few years first before you can buy the, uh, the majority shares from uh, the current shareholder you can have that into the agreement when uh, when you, you, you draft the, the buy agreement for, for the deal however if you the company target the company strategy has to have the uh, majority and also acquiring 100% of the company unit, then you should really put in some sort of uh, earn out program to, for, for the investment and buy, buying the companies in the emerging markets like Vietnam. Because you really need the old, um, owner okay, to stay with you, to help you. And that should also put into agreement that they need to have responsibilities to support you in every process for the integration uh, in the specific uh, area. And it's not just about like uh, asking them to perform in the next one, two or three years in the financial. So they will put their target and only in that aspect. And then the, after they are out, the, the company is also get to nowhere. So you need to get them to involve in realizing the synergies over time, over the long time, helping with preparing 
follow that. Also, helping uh, deal with the challenges that the two companies, the new companies, are going to face. So that will be very important. Okay. So in my next video, I'm going in that I I am going to share one of the cases that uh, also about this aspect. There, there, there is one of one company in the market that I I saw also do very well in this aspect when they came into Vietnam and acquired uh, one of the biggest uh, retail like uh, the, uh, electronic retail company in Vietnam. Although uh, they, I wouldn't discuss the problems they face and the, they, they did not do well, but uh, in this aspect, they, I think they did very well. Uh, so uh, please pay attention to that. Okay, so I hope that you enjoy and like the video today and you get something out of the video today and learn some lesson and learn some thing about this uh, Vietnam market specifically or also emerging market situation and how to deal with uh, that and also if you um, have more comments and have, have more experience in your uh, work about solve, solving the problems and also problems you face please put into the comment section so to share with everyone so we can learn from you as well and also if you like this video please please press the like button so that i know that there is interest side to uh, watch this topic uh, area so in the future i will prepare more topics about this uh, related to this to share with you in the please uh, subscribe so that uh, my next video about the case studies i want to do four uh, of the biggest case study in vietnam market from uh, m a from the past to share with you uh, about their post uh, m a integration uh, good and bad uh, and what lessons we can learn from those cases. Bye-bye. Have a good day.